Here I am again then, looking to play with my toys behind me. This time we're going to look at the Jupiter 6 and we're going to look at dual oscillator patches. So things that you can do when you've got two oscillators, whatever they may be. I'm not going to go into massive depth about all the different things you can do because they're probably little episodes on their own. But yeah, Jupiter 6, nice bit of fun. Okay then, here we are with a beautiful Jupiter 6. We've got two VCOs, one and two. Got two envelopes. At the minute, I'm using envelope two, just like a gate. It's basically on or off. And that's a single oscillator coming out of VCO one. Different synths do different things. This one's got a mixer between VCO one and VCO two, so you're always listening to one of the one of the uh, one of the oscillators. Other ones have independent sliders and stuff. But so that's VCO two. VCO1. Blend between them. We get that little phasiness because they're about as in tune as I can make them. But it makes that odd phasey noise. So if you want something crisp and clear, single oscillator. But with two oscillators though, once we start detuning VCO2, we start to get all sorts of fatness. It's got that Moog style fatness, hasn't it? That. And if I knock these down an octave, we're now going to go into bass territory. And if we detune it a little bit more, you can hear it beating. And on some synths, like the Sub-37, you can lock that detune in, that beat. Because once you change notes, it changes its rhythm because of the ratio between the notes. So some synths, you can lock that in so you get that constant rhythm, but not many. Well, this tone is your typical re-space. In fact, I think Biceps new track uses something like this all the way through. If we add a little bit of release to that, it'll make it more natural if we're going between notes. I've made it a little bit clickier, but you get the idea. So that's on a solo, which on this means it's in mono mode. If we put it into poly mode, let's detune it less. When you're in poly mode, you tend to have less detune on things because otherwise it sounds really out of tune. But that's just a really nice, beautiful pad style tone. And it's rich and it's full, it's got no chorus, it's got no reverb on it, it's just a nice, thick, rich pad. And they're just slightly detuned, but of course we can detune them a lot more than that. Let's. That's a fifth, so seven semitones. And that's a source of all sorts of beauty. So blending between the two notes then, we've got VCO1 and VCO2, so. I've just a little bit of VCO2 in there. Gorgeous, isn't it? Let's add a little bit of envelope to that to make it a little bit more interesting. We'll add a little bit of decay to the to the amp envelope, and we'll do something similar with the filter envelope. We'll bring the filter envelope in, and we'll have the frequency of the filter a little bit lower. Just to give this a little bit of a transient at the start, so a little bit of a punch. So it doesn't get cluttered, really. You can hear that it's sort of punching in a little bit. And then just play.
play around with those envelopes to get what you need for your track. Adding a bit of resonance there makes it more synthy. So all these tones you just simply can't do on a single oscillator synth. Let's put it back into mono mode and bring this down a bit and let's do some more bassy style tones with it. We'll have the, the envelope modulating the filter a bit. Straight away, nice bass tone uh, uh, or lead tone even. So that's seven semitones between VCO1 and VCO2. Nice. I quite like that on a major third. Let's just make it a bit brighter so we know what's happening. That's four semitones between VCO1 and VCO2. These are just small intervals. Of course, you can have bigger intervals. Let's put them both on the same note for a minute. Dropping VCO1 or dropping any of them by an octave basically gives you a sub. I'll use VCO1 because this has got a square and a triangle. Go to the square and drop this down an octave. Basically, you've got a sub main note or main oscillator and then the sub. And of course, you could then put that at two octaves lower. Most subs are pulses or triangles. The triangle's a lot smoother. Much more subby, if that makes any sense. And then, of course, you can change the oscillator shapes. So put one onto a square. Fact, let's do a bit of... Trying to find the note I'm looking for. <laughs> Just loads of stuff in here. Uh, let's lock one of them up by a couple of octaves. Put that to a triangle and we start getting bell-like tones. Let's add some release. Just a nice way of having something cutting through the mix while you still got some build body to it. And one of the really interesting things you can do with two VCOs is sync the two oscillators together. So you reset one oscillator, You'll have seen all these graphs where you sort of squish the oscillators together and you just get loads of really nice tones. Do it the right way around here. Um... So I'm syncing oscillator two with oscillator one here. Oscillator two has got to be higher in pitch than oscillator one for it to work. And unfortunately on this, it's, uh, well, I say unfortunately for this tone in particular, um, this is quantized to semitone, so I'm not getting a smooth sweep. 
Well, you can hear all the different tones you get out of this now. Really cut through a mix nicely. We can automate this sweep. So let's do it on this. We use envelope one to modulate VCO two. So there's envelope one. Let's do something like this. Let's leave the uh, filter out of it for now. Just don't modulate the filter. There we go. So that's basically twisting this knob. Classic tones. Let's take the release off. And then you get different tones, obviously depending on the amount of modulation you put in there. And the speed of the modulation. So you can do lovely big sinky sweeps. Let's try that. Let's put that into unison. So we're playing all six voices at the same time. gonna add some unison detune so they'll all go all sloppy and marvelous again not something you can do without having two oscillators and the next thing you can't do without having two oscillators is frequency modulation. Frequency modulation is basically modulating the frequency of one of the oscillators, but we generally attribute this to things being in the audio rates because let's use just the LFO for now, shall we? And let's modulate VCO1. Let's take the sync off. Just listen to VCO1. <laughs> let's take that off. Modulate it with the LFO. So that is actually FM. So is this. So is this. But what we're talking about here is modulating things at audio rates. Sometimes you've got a second oscillator like you've got here and you can have an LFO on that and things like this. But what we'll do now though is we'll modulate VCO1 with VCO2. So we've got cross mod here. It's called cross mod as well. Take that off. Let's put it back on solo. So this is the amount of modulation. If we put this on low range, for example. Let's put it on. Let's put it on an audio rate. Let's play around here a bit. Let's add some envelope. Reduce the frequency. Oh, nice that, isn't it, already? That's a lovely, thick, rich tone, and you just can't do these things without two oscillators. Dirty as that, isn't it? I love that. Let's listen to more VCO2 in there. And as I've said before, adjusting the cutoff of the frequency using the envelope modulation rather than the frequency of the cutoff itself. So just keeps things nice and crisp. This opens it up much more. Different effects. 
little bit more release. Let's whack that up a couple of octaves. And what you find is things detune when you do that, so you've got to go in and retune stuff just to fit it in with your track. But the other thing FM does is lovely metallic clangs like this. Really richly harmonic things and in harmonic as well. But it's just a source of much more complex tones. Cool. So as I said at the very start, a very brief episode there. I didn't want to go into too much detail on things like FM. That's probably a whole video on its own because it's a vast sort of vast amount of stuff you can do with it but i hope you enjoyed that i hope you found it useful and if you did please think about subscribing ring the bell join me over on patreon this channel is funded by youtube ads and by my wonderful patrons so head over to patreon.com slash starsky car where for the price of a really nasty looking coffee per month you can get things like patches samples and loads of little extra goodies and do take a look at my starsky car website as well where i have patches samples and stuff to download for free but nice if you pick up some of the stuff that you have to buy because again it all helps to support the channel i'll have a think about what i'm going to do in the next episode of um of patch creation so if you've got any ideas do drop them in the comments and i will see you next time but thanks for staying to the very end cheers <laughs>